Today we're making a rustic farmhouse fall wreath. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. So you're going to choose whatever types of ribbon you like. I'm going to choose three different kinds and I'm just showing you that you can get a great variety in the fall section at Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some thrifted gorgeous burlap ribbon. There's no wire in here. It's just so pretty and ruffled. I'm going to use a thrifted pumpkin. Just going to use the sign part in the middle. I'm going to use a Dollar Tree wreath. And I'm going to use a thrifted pick. And I think these originally came from Walmart. They had a yellow clearance sticker on them. Okay, so this wreath is about a 12 by 12. It's kind of squished out of shape. It's more like an oval than a circle. So I'm just gonna have to work around that. I'm gonna start by wrapping this wreath. Just like this with a little bit of hot glue. I'm gonna protect my fingers here. Add a good bit of glue. Press that down into the wreath. Then I'm gonna start winding around where the fringe goes right next to that center ruffle. Today, I am participating with Nadia for Wreath Wednesday. DIYs by Nadia. Y'all be sure that you go check her out. I'm gonna have her video link and her channel link in the description box. Thank you, Nadia, for the opportunity. Okay, so we're gonna do this all the way around. You can see I'm lining that fringe up because this is layered burlap. If you don't have a layered burlap, you can certainly use just the regular plain pieces and just be sure that you cover up all of that bind wreath underneath. You can certainly use a styrofoam wreath. You won't be able to see it, but you have to be careful about glue on those. Just keep that in mind. I'm just gonna keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until we get back to the beginning. Now we're gonna put more glue down and press it down into that. And hold it for a minute so that it doesn't unwind itself. Keep in mind if you're putting this outside, you're going to want to use something more like a Gorilla Glue so that the humidity doesn't make your hot glue release. Time to sharpen those scissors, I think. So I've just taken the stand off the bottom of the pumpkin and I'm gonna work with the orange side of the pumpkin rather than the chalkboard sign. I think I'm gonna put it on the bottom and we're gonna use this wreath like an oval so it's gonna stand up like an egg. I'm gonna cut off two pieces of my floral wire and we're gonna use those to glue down to that pumpkin and hold it to the wreath. I also have two black pieces of scrap paper here that I'm going to use to put on top of our glue. So folding it in half like a hairpin, I'm going to put a good bit on each side, pressing it down, and then pressing the paper right over the top. It just gives it a little more security so that it doesn't come off while we're finagling it to get it into that burlap on the wreath. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the other side. And I'm just using the clamps that came from Dollar Tree because they help hold everything in place when you're moving it around so nothing comes dislodged. After the glue has had a chance to set up, we'll continue. Okay, so here we go. We're moving the clamps. Then making sure again that the pumpkin is where I want it to sit on this wreath, I'm going to press these wires to the back and thread one piece through each side. Just like so. And then twist them around to secure them in place and clip off any excess. There's a little slack there in my wire, so I will be able to push the pumpkin down a bit so it will sit flush on the bottom. So now I've got it where it needs to be, right sitting in the bottom. Now we're gonna start working on the greenery or the leaf part 
of the arrangement. This is what gives it that rustic look. We're gonna use some colorful fall leaves. I'm gonna cut them off their little plastic picks and start putting a little base underneath this pumpkin. Almost like it's sitting in a nest of leaves or a leaf pile. Who doesn't like sitting in a leaf pile? Okay, so I'm just gonna add some hot glue. I'm gonna tuck around and over that little glue strip. Don't be bothered by the fact that it's exposed and terrible looking on the bottom because it'll be covered up. I'm just going to be sure that I've taken a variety of the leaves, the ones that match the, the look that I'm going for, and I'm just gonna place them around. Not so much in a pattern, but just, you know, like maybe they fell down out of the tree themselves. A little lighter one on top. See, this is easy, easy. And you can just be creative and do this however you want. You can also add some little mini pine cones or berries or whatever you like on yours. I'm going to add some on the top and I'm gonna add some of these pretty little white flowers that came from Dollar Tree. I know that some of the ribbon I'm using on top is going to be white, so I want to use some of this white down here in the bottom too. Kinda of wanna carry that color through. So I'm just cutting off the little knobby parts on these two. And then I'm going to use the other flower with the little stem part to lay it sideways underneath there. And it almost looks like one single hydrangea. So far, so good, right? Now we're gonna choose the ribbon. This is the really fun part. We're gonna make a pretty bow. I'm gonna use some plaid ribbon. This was thrifted, and I have two different Dollar Tree ribbons. They are all wire ribbon, and we're gonna use 18 inch pieces. See my ruler down there on the bottom? 18 inches. Okay, very simply, we're gonna fold them over, pinch in the middle, and then walk our fingers to each other, and we have a bow, simple. This is a quick wreath, this is nothing difficult. So the bow should be the same. We're gonna do the same thing with the green. Same exact process, folding it over, pinching it, and then walking your fingers toward the other fingers. You're gonna stack these up in whatever order that you would like them to appear when you put them down on your pumpkin, on your wreath, rather. Same thing here with the plaid, and then we're just gonna put him right on top. You can fasten this down with a zip tie, like I am, or you can use some floral wire or a twist tie whatever you want to use to put those together. Fluff the bow a little bit, that's what I'm doing, trying to make sure everything is where it should be. Then do your final tightening. I'm gonna cut off the edges, fluff out that bow, and then I can start either dovetailing it, which is what I thought I was gonna do at first, or just cutting it at a slant, and that's what I'm doing here. Just gonna do slants in each one of those tails all the way through and all the colors so far so good right easy easy to do okay Now I'm going to put this off to the side over here and right now I'm just looking to see if the bow is the size I want it, if it needs to be trimmed, what I want to do with it. And I think I'll use another zip tie here to just attach it right onto the wreath. This is so easy to do. Make sure that when you pull it tight that you pull that little knobby part to the back so that it doesn't show on your beautiful wreath. I'm gonna fluff out my little bows, the tails and the little loops. I'm not really concerned whether or not those tails are even. This is Rustic Farmhouse and we are not looking for perfection. Now I'm going to cut 
two eight inch pieces of this plaid because we're gonna extend this out a bit and I'm going to cut two eight inch pieces of the green. You can certainly do the tan color as well if you want. But I had the, the burlap in the back so I didn't feel like I needed to have more of that color. I'm going to fold them over and dovetail them. You can do them at the same time. Makes it a little bit more timely. You can get things done a little quicker if you do it like this. But you do whichever way you are most comfortable. Alright, so I'm going to fold it in half. And I think I want to tuck these on either side of that bow to extend it outward because I feel like it needed more. I could have added more leaves, but I feel like the bow needed a little bit better of a presence. So this is what I came up with. Now I'm just going to put the glue on there and press it down on that burlap underneath. Here's my glue gun that I'm trying today. And I am going to put it underneath this one too. Okay, so far so good. Now let's do the same thing with the plaid. We're going to fold it in half and tuck it underneath on that side with a little bit of hot glue. It will fit nicely right in there. And see how that just automatically extends that bow out? Certainly if you have a different bow in mind, something that's bigger, you could do a bigger bow. Or rather than using 18 inch pieces, you could try 24 inches and make an even larger bow to fill up your space. But I like this, I think it's cute. I like my little petite bow. And I think that this bow is okay. I want the main, the main part of the attention for this wreath to be the pumpkin. But I think that bow, that bow grabs your attention too, doesn't it? One more of those flowers, gonna put it right in the center of that little bow. I feel like that sets it off perfectly. I'm going to double up my leaves. You can do this, it's so easy. Just a little glue in between and then press that up right up in the middle. I've got lots of spider webs because I'm using a cool temperature for this rather than my high heat glue gun. Now for the hanger, I'm just gonna take a long piece of jute and I'm showing you here what I already had done and just gonna tie a knot just like that. I'm gonna slip it underneath the bow tails and then press the ends right through the loop. Sorry that you can't see that part, but you get the idea. And then that's how we're gonna hang it. And you can fluff your tails, you can fluff your bows, and our project is complete. Do you like this little wreath? And will you be trying this wreath? Do you enjoy rustic farmhouse decor? If you do, you should subscribe to my channel because that's what my channel is all about. That with a little bit of cottage as well. Thank you, Nadia. I had a great time doing this. Thank you all for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.